A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to Hindi News Analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 13th of July 2022. The list of articles we are going to discuss today is displayed on the screen. You can go through it. Now let's start our discussion. Let us take up this editorial. It is written based on central government's last month announcement of creating jobs. Author of the editorial has pointed out the concerns in the announcement and the steps to be taken to handle unemployment problem. So let us see what was the announcement, concerns and the way forward as suggested by the author. Take note of the syllabus given here. An announcement of creating employment was made by our Prime Minister last month. After reviewing the status of human resources in all the departments and ministries of the central government. After this, Prime Minister's office has instructed to recruit 10 lakh people. It will be done by the government in a mission mode in the next 1.5 years or 18 months. And this announcement is in line with government's priority of employment generation coupled with improving employability. The need for this is twofold. One is the worrying unemployment rate in our country. Recently, government released the statistics related to this under the annual report of Periodic Labour Force Survey for the period July 2020 to June 2021. Periodic Labour Force Survey is released by the National Statistical Office since 2017. It estimates the key employment and unemployment indicators in both rural and urban areas. Now, for 2020 to 2021 period, the report shows that the unemployment rate fell to 4.2 percentage compared with 2019 to 20. In 2019 to 20 period, unemployment rate was 4.8 percentage. It also noted that the rural areas recorded an unemployment rate of 3.3 percentage, whereas urban areas recorded a higher unemployment rate of 6.7 percentage. This is the official unemployment rate statistics, okay? But according to private organizations, unemployment scenario in our country is much worse. For example, if you take the data by Center for Monitoring Indian Economy, it provides data for the recent period of January to April 2022. Here, unemployment stands at 7.43%. Apart from this, various CMIE reports have noted certain crucial points. One is unemployment levels rise with education. It noted that as of December 2021, one in five college graduates are unemployed. Even if you take the data for January to April 2022, unemployment among graduates and those who have education levels more than graduation is high of about 17.8%. Secondly, it noted that more than 17 million Indians, that is 1.7 crore Indians, wants to work. But they are not actively seeking jobs because of the discouraging economic situation. So this is the employment situation in our country. Second need for government's mission mode recruitment plan is the vacancy in the government positions. According to Arthur, there are around 40 lakh sanctioned posts in various departments or ministries of the central government. And out of these, 8.72 lakhs positions are vacant. That is, 22 percentage posts are now vacant. So, there is a need for filling such vacancies to deliver good governance. Due to these needs, the Prime Minister ordered recruitment in a mission mode. But as I said, the author has cited three main concerns in this plan. Now we will see that. The first concern is the high level of vacancy. Around 22 percentage posts are vacant. That means the departments or ministries have been functioning inadequately. There were no enough staffs to carry out government functions. This would have led to long delays in work and inefficiencies in executing tasks or projects. It would have also paved way for corruption as bribe would have been demanded for prioritizing someone's work. In such a scenario, how did the government function with these inadequacies and inefficiencies is a big question. And then, why the government waited so long to fill these vacancies? This raises another crucial doubt like, is the recruitment plan genuinely aimed at enhancing employment opportunities or is it just an election tactic? Okay? 
Now the second concern is about the quality of employment that would be offered by this recruitment plan. Whether it would provide permanent employment or it will just provide only contract level post is not known yet. See, in the recent years, the government departments are exercising the strategy of contract posts. The contract post has increased from 11.11 lakh in 2017 to 24.31 lakh positions in 2021. That is, it has increased more than twice. Why contractual employment is preferred by departments is because contract posts pay much less and other benefits associated with normal government jobs also need not be provided. Okay. The last concern is the number of vacancies announced is insufficient. You may think it is sufficient to fill the sanctioned post. But the problem lies in the fact that unemployment rate is much more than the vacancies and every year more youths and graduates are entering the workforce. As per World Bank's data, every year there is an annual addition of 50 lakh to 70 lakh workers to the workforce. So we need 70 lakh jobs. But government is aiming to create only 10 lakh jobs. So author worries this recruitment plan will not provide the intended benefits like reducing the unemployment problem. Okay. So keeping these concerns in mind, author has suggested measures that would help in fulfilling government's objective of providing employment opportunities. First, while planning, government must ensure that the employment generated will be of standard quality. It should provide appropriate salary and benefits. Second, more employment should be created within the government because many government sectors are lagging behind in international indicators. So, more jobs have to be created to take these sectors to another level. Also, we cannot rely on the private sector. See, even now the plan is for government sector only and not for private. Because private sector now only recovering from the economic slowdown caused by the pandemic. It should also be kept in mind that the objective of private sector is profit and not the welfare of the people. So, privatization would not help. Social welfare objectives can only be fulfilled by government initiatives. And another important suggestion is reorienting the industrialization policy. Authors suggest that the industrial policy should focus on labor intensive sectors of the economy and promote them. This includes the micro, small and medium enterprises and informal sector organizations. As part of the policy, certain things can be ensured like providing better technology, providing finances, etc. Next suggestion is creating an urban employment guarantee program. We already have MG Narega for rural areas. So, a similar and much better program for urban India is extremely needed. According to author, these features should be included in the urban program, which is basic urban services providing special training, daycare centers for child care to enable more women labor force participation and to ensure quality care for children. And thirdly, it should facilitate quality urban life. So all these suggestions will bring a radical change in the government's employment policy and fulfill the desired objectives. Okay. So that's all regarding this news article. In this article discussion, we saw about the employment and unemployment statistics in India. And then we saw about the need for employment generation and three main concerns raised by the author regarding the employment plan. And finally, we saw about the suggestions given by the author which would help in fulfilling government's objective of providing employment opportunities. So with these key learned points, let's move on to next news article discussion. Now look at this news article. This news article talks about our national emblem. See, two days back, Prime Minister Narendra Modi unveiled the national emblem cast on the top of the under construction parliament building. This has sparked a huge controversy among the opposition. Here, the controversy is over the features of the replica of the Ashoka pillar. The Congress said that the lions at the original site in the Sarnath were graceful and regally confident. And the replica over the new parliament was menacing and has an aggressive posture. They also said that the emblem has been modified and insulted. The designers of the massive sculpture, however, have claimed that there is no deviation. So, this is the crux of the news article given here. 
In this context, let us quickly go through some of the important facts about our national emblem in prelims perspective. See, national emblem is one among the national symbols of India. So, how many national symbols are there? There are totally 17 national symbols. You can see that on the image given here. Remember, the national symbols of India represent the culture and nature of India's national identity. That is, they are intrinsic to the Indian identity and heritage. And they infuse a sense of pride and patriotism in every Indian's heart, right? Now talking about the national emblem, our state emblem is an adaption of the lion capital originally found on the top of Ashoka column at Sarnath established in 250 BC. Originally, there are four lions mounted back to back on a circular abacus which itself rests on a bell-shaped lotus. The four Asiatic lions symbolize power, courage, pride and confidence. The frieze of the abacus has sculptures in high relief of an elephant, a galloping horse, a bull and a lion separated by intervening dharma chakras. So here the Buddhist interpretation say that the animals represents different phases of Buddha's life and the non-religious interpretation say that they depict the reign of Emperor Ashoka in the four geographical directions while the wheels depict his enlightened rule. But in the state emblem, only three lions are visible, the fourth one being hidden from view. The wheel appears in relief in the center of the abagus with the bull on the right and the horse on the left and the outlines of other wheels on extreme right and left. Know that the bell-shaped lotus has been omitted. The words Satyameva Jayate from Muntaka Upanisha meaning truth alone triumphs are inscribed below the abagus in Devanagari script. The capital was adopted as the national emblem on January 26, 1950. It was chosen as a symbol of contemporary India's reaffirmation of its ancient commitment to world peace and goodwill. Today, the national emblem is a symbol of government of India and is used on official documents and it is the official seal of the President of India and central and state governments. The symbol is recognized internationally as representing the Republic of India and is found on all passports and other international documents. Okay? So that's all regarding this news article. In this news article, we saw about the national emblem and its significance. With these learned points, let's move on to next news article discussion. Look at this picture. Yesterday, the images captured by the NASA's James Webb Space Telescope was published. This is one of the pictures. It shows the cosmic cliff of Carina Nebula. See, a nebula is a giant cloud of dust and gas in space. Like the ones you can see in these images. It is very colorful and astonishing, right? See, when there is more than one nebula, we call it nebulae, okay? Mostly, the gases are hydrogen and helium. And the dust is the fine cosmic dust which includes samples from comets and asteroids. See, nebula forms in two events. One is when there is an explosion of a dying star like in supernova. And in this explosive event, gas and dust are thrown out which forms nebula. Second, nebula are also the regions where new stars are beginning to form. So, a nebula could be a birthplace of stars or the scene of their demise and sometimes even both. Okay? Here, know that there are different types of nebulae. Emission nebulae, reflection nebulae, planetary nebulae, supernova remnants and absorption nebulae. Okay? But generally, the dust and gases in the nebula are very widespread and they are pulled together by gravity slowly. When they come closer, they become clumps of dust and gases like a cloud. And as these clumps get bigger and bigger, their gravity gets stronger and stronger. Finally, what happens is, this clump gets so big that it collapses from its own gravity. This collapse causes the material at the center of the cloud to heat up, making it a hard core. This hard core is the beginning of a star, okay? But remember, each individual nebula is unique. Also know that the nebula exists in the interstellar space. Interstellar space is the space between the stars, okay? The closest known nebula to the Earth is the one in this picture. 
it is called the helix nebula this image was captured by nasa's spitzer space telescope again look how beautiful as well as creepy it is then what is this cosmic cliff it is the edge or wall of a star forming region in a nebula it includes hot ionized gas and hot dust this happens due to high radiation this edge or rim moves into the nebula and it slowly pushes into the gas and dust if the rim encounters any unstable material it causes a disturbance and leads to increased pressure and this will trigger the material to collapse and form new stars but remember the same kind of disturbance may also prevent star formation so a star formation happens due to a very delicate balance between the disturbance pressure and other factors now today the news is a cosmic cliff in carina nebula has been pictured by james webb telescope this cosmic cliff is the one in the young star forming region called ngc 3324 and this ngc 3324 is located at the north west corner of the carina nebula and is roughly 7600 light years away as you can see it looks like a landscape of mountains and valleys filled with glittering stars right here know that the carina nebula resides in the constellation carina the constellation is nothing but the group of stars okay here carina nebula is one of the largest and brightest nebula it is located roughly 7600 light years from earth okay so that's all regarding this news article in this news article discussion we saw about nebula and carina nebula and the constellations okay with these learned points let's move on to next news article discussion take a look at this news article the news is about a complaint lodged by the aiadm case deposed coordinator mr o pannir selvam with the chief election commissioner In his complaint he termed that the July 11 meetings of the party's general council and executive sessions has been held in contravention of the party's bylaws. So this is the crux of the news article given here. See the issue is not important for our examination but by using this opportunity let us quickly go through chief election commissioner and election commissioners. This is very important. As you know The Election Commission is a permanent and an independent body established by the Constitution of India directly to ensure free and fair elections in the country. Article 324 of the Constitution provides the power of superintendence, direction and control of preparation of electoral rolls and conduct of all elections to parliament, state legislature, the office of president, the office of vice president to the Election Commission. Along with this the article has also made the provisions with regard to the composition of election commission remember the election commission shall consist of the chief election commissioner and such number of other election commissioners the president may fix from time to time see since its inception in 1950 until 15th october 1989 the election commission functioned as a single member body consisting only of the chief election commissioner later since the voting was lowered from 21 to 18 years and just to cope up with the increased work of the election commission the president appointed two more election commissioners on 16th october 1989 So thereafter the election commission functioned as a multi member body consisting of three election commissioners however the two post of election commissioners were abolished in january 1990 and the election commission was again reverted to the earlier position but then again in october 1993 the president appointed two more election commissioners and since then until today the election commission has been functioning as a multi member body consisting of three election commissioners remember the chief election commissioner and the two other election commissioners have equal powers and receive equal salary and allowances which are similar to those of a judge of the supreme court and in case of difference of opinion amongst the chief election commissioner and the two other election commissioners the matter is decided by the commission by majority now coming to the appointment the appointment of the chief election commissioner and other election commissioners shall be made by the president 
when any other election commissioner is appointed the chief election commissioner will act as the chairman of the election commission note that the president may also appoint regional commissioners as he may consider necessary to assist the election commission but this can be done only after consultation with the election commission the conditions of service and tenure of office of the election commissioners and the regional commissioners will be decided by the president but as of now they hold office for a term of 6 years or until they attain the age of 65 years they can resign at any time and can also be removed before the expiry of their term and know that the chief election commissioner can be removed from office only through a process similar to that of a supreme court judge okay the constitution has not prescribed the qualifications of the members of the election commission know that the commission has not debarred the retiring election commissioners from any further appointment by the government that means they can be reappointed okay so that's all regarding this news article in this news article discussion we saw about the chief election commissioner and two other election commissioners and their functions with these key learned points let's move on to next news article discussion look at this news article this news article talks about scorpion class submarines the news is that the navies of india and brazil both of which operate the french scorpion class submarines are exploring options for collaboration towards maintenance of the diesel electric attack submarines so in this background let us quickly go through the scorpion class submarine in prelims perspective so what are scorpion class submarines see the scorpion class submarines are one of the most advanced conventional submarines in the world The submarine has superior stealth features. What are these stealth features? See, this is the movement that is quiet and careful in order not to be seen or heard. Okay, the features includes advanced acoustic silencing techniques, low radiated noise levels, and ability to attack with precision guided weapons on board. Okay, see, the Indian Navy intends to use the submarines for missions like. area surveillance intelligence gathering anti submarine warfare anti surface warfare and mine laying operations know that the submarines are armed with six torpedo launching tubes 18 heavy weapons tube launched anti ship missiles and precision guided weapons also it can launch crippling attacks on the surface and underwater enemy targets Moreover, the attack submarines can travel at a maximum submerged speed of approximately 20 knots and have the ability to remain submerged for 21 days. It has a diving depth of more than 350 meters. The Scorpion class of submarines were designed by French naval shipping firm DCNS in partnership with Spanish shipbuilding firm Navantia. Remember, the submarine is part of the Navy's Project 75. and the first submarine under this project was commissioned into the navy in december 2017 at present the navy has four submarines from this project which are ins kalwari ins kanderi ins karanj and ins vela the fifth submarine wagir which was launched in november 2020 is undergoing sea trials and it is likely to be commissioned before end of 2022 and the sixth scorpion class submarine is ins wagazir and it is also under sea trials okay so that's all regarding this news article in this news article we saw about scorpion class submarines and project 75 we also saw various submarines under this project with all these key learned points let's move on to next part of our news article discussion which is preliminary practice questions discussion Look at the first question. The national motto of India, Satya Meva Jayate, inscribed below the emblem of India, is taken from Katha Upanishad, Chandogya Upanishad, Atreya Upanishad, and Mundaga Upanishad. The words Satya Meva Jayate, meaning truth alone triumphs, is from Mundaga Upanishad. They are inscribed below the apagas in Devanagari script. We saw that in the discussion itself, right? Okay. Remember the Sanskrit term Upanishad means sitting down near. Here the term is referring to the student sitting down near the teacher while receiving spiritual knowledge. Know that the Mundaga Upanishad is an ancient Sanskrit Vedic text embedded inside Atharva Veda. So the correct answer is option D, Mundaga Upanishad. Look at the second question. Consider the following statements. Nebula is the region where new stars are beginning to form. 
statement 2 carina nebula is the closest known nebula to earth statement 3 all nebulae either emit or reflect light we have to find the incorrect statement here see statement 1 is correct since the sentence does not use only nebula is also formed when a star explodes or dies okay statement 2 it is incorrect because helix nebula is the closest nebula to earth statement 3 it is also incorrect we saw that there are different types of nebula right like uh, emission nebulae reflection nebulae planetary nebulae supernova remnants and absorption nebulae among these emission nebulae are so named because they emit their own light then a reflection nebulae reflect the light from nearby stars but the absorption nebulae which is also known as dark nebulae they don't emit or reflect light but block light coming from behind them okay these nebulae tend to contain large amounts of dust which allows them to absorb visible light from stars and nebulae beyond them so all nebulae does not emit or reflect light so our correct answer here is option d 2 and 3 only look at this question Article 324 of the Constitution has made which of the following provisions to safeguard and ensure the independence and impartial functioning of the election commission. The election commissioners are provided with security of tenure because their term is fixed as provided in the Constitution. Statement 2. The Constitution has prescribed the qualifications for appointment to the office of election commission. We have to find the correct statement here. See, only the chief election commissioner is provided with the security of tenure. He cannot be removed from his office except in the same manner and on the same grounds as the judge of the Supreme Court. In other words, Chief Election Commissioner can be removed from his office by Parliament with special majority in Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha on the grounds of proved misbehavior or incapacity. And other election commissioners can be removed by the President on the recommendation of Chief Election Commissioner. Though the Constitution has sought to safeguard and ensure the independence and impartiality of the election commission, some flaws with respect to the members of election commission can be noted. What are they? The constitution has not prescribed the qualifications for the members of the election commission. Also, the constitution has not specified the term of members of election commission. But the term of chief election commissioner is prescribed. Okay. Also, the constitution has not debarred the retiring election commissioners from any further appointment by the government. So, both the statements here are incorrect. So, our answer here will be option D, neither one nor two. Look at this question. This question is regarding scorpion class submarine. See, this question is a quiz question for you. This is a very easy question. Find the answer and post it in the comment section. The main question based on today's discussion is displayed on the screen. You can write your answer and post that in the comment section. If you like the video, hit the like button, post your comments and share the video with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.